He brought me back to the door of the temple. We're in Ezekiel 47. And there was water. So in the temple, remember where we were walking around? We were on the other side of this gate when they shooed us away yesterday, looking at it. Uh, he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the front of the temple faced east, and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. It's flowing toward this gate. Now watch, watch what happens with it. Verse 3. And when the man went out to the east with a line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. So he goes 1,500 feet. And he brought me through the water. So water is flowing out uh, from the temple in the east through this gate, flowing out 1,500 feet. And the water came up to my ankles. Do you remember yesterday you were in ankle deep water? Very briefly. <laughs> it got deep fast in Hezekiah's tunnel. Now watch this, and again, verse 4, he measured a thousand cubits, another 1,500 feet. He brought me through the waters, and the water came up to what? Yeah, it's rising. The, the, the depth of the water is increasing. And he measured a thousand and brought me through the water, and it came up to my what? Whoa. And again he measured, verse 5, a thousand, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep, the water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. Now keep reading down to verse 9. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. And it will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters. Now, that water is flowing that way. What is that way? Yeah. And, and the Dead Sea is what? Dead. How many fish are in the Dead Sea? Look what, this is a transformation. We talk about in the millennium, there is a a complete transformation and what we see in verse 9 is the waters will be healed and everything will live where the river goes so this river is flowing out and everywhere it's going wherever the water is touching it is going from dead parched dead sea salt everything to life and verse 10 you'll recognize some words here and it shall be the fishermen will stand by it from and Gedi, does that ring a bell? How many fishermen did you see by En Gedi? See how in the millennium, remember this is where the, the, the lion and the lamb and the snakes are no longer poisonous and the carnivores are no longer carnivorous and the predators are no longer predators. Now watch what happens here. Keep reading. They, they're at En Gedi to En Eglaim. I'm in verse 10. They will be places for the spreading of their nets. Their fish will be the same kind as the fish of the great sea. Great sea, the Mediterranean. Exceeding many. Look at verse 11. Another little lesson there. But its swamps and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. And along the banks of the river and on the side, they will grow all kinds of trees for fruit. And on and on it goes. Now keep reading to the next chapter, chapter 48. Look at the very last verse of the book. And, and this is the end of the description of this city. And it says, And all the way around shall be 18,000 cubits, and the name of the city from that day shall be, what? Yeah, Jehovah Shama. The Lord is there. Okay, some lessons. Now, what I just gave you is an overview of this chapter. This is literally what it says. What are the lessons? Well, in, in verse 2, 1 and 2 of, verse, of chapter 47, you know, the water in verse 1 flowing, and he brought him out, and it's flowing out the gateway. Here, here's the, what gives life is the water. Where does the water flow from? Yeah, the fl water flows from out from under the temple. Do you know what that means? I wrote in my Bible, John 7, 37 to 39, blessings only flow from God's presence. Jesus said when he was in that temple courtyard, he says, out of you... If you believe in me, out of you will flow rivers of water. The, the blessings flow from God's presence in our life. The water flows from the place that embodies God's presence. The, the more we acknowledge and seek after the presence of the Lord, the more God's blessing is in our life. The, it's, it's like 
the, the closer we are to the cell tower, the stronger the signal, the more we acknowledge the Lord's presence, the more his blessing is poured out in our life. And look what happens when we get in the river. See, the, the presence of God is portrayed by this river. The river is flowing out from under the temple. And it's kind of like an extension of God's presence flowing out. Watch what happens. The, the deeper you get into the water, the more of you gets covered up. You catch, that's what he's showing. You walk a little ways, it's ankle. You walk a little, you stay in the water further, it's to your knees. You stay in the water further, it's to your waist. You go a little bit further, you're completely buried in the water. Do you know what he's saying? The more you're in God's presence, the more our self is lost in him. What a beautiful picture of us to be, remember how John the Baptist put it? He must what? And I must what? How do you do that? You stay in his presence. The deeper you go into the presence of the Lord, the more we decrease and get completely surrounded by the Lord and his blessing. Self must be lost in the fullness. And by the way, this river, Jesus said it would be a river which portrays the spirit. This water coming out, this life-giving power uh, energizing, regenerating, all those are descriptions of what the New Testament describes as the Holy Spirit. And that river, see, always in the Old Testament, God portrays stuff with pictures. That's why the sacrifices, and there were seven different sacrifices, there's seven different feasts, they were to give pictures. This is a picture of the Holy Spirit released through the, the work of the atonement and the work on the sacrifice of Christ, releasing the Spirit into our life, and the more that we dwell in him, the more that we decrease and he increases. Let's have a word of prayer and thank the Lord. Father in heaven, right here in front of this eastern gate, we bow before you and we say thank you. Thank you that from your presence flow rivers of living water, which is the Holy Spirit within us. Thank you that that river, the more that we keep ourselves in your presence and full of your spirit, the more of you there is, the less of us. You must increase and we must decrease. That's our prayer on the side of this mountain, outside this gate. And how I pray that as you flow through us, that we will be a blessing and that we will say, I don't want to be a swamp and a marsh and stagnant. I want to give. I want to serve. I want to speak for you. That's our desire. Lord, apply that to our hearts today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.